Good morning. Good to see you here this morning. And you know what? I have two words to say before we get started. Go birds. I mean, this, uh, this kind of feels like a Super Bowl Sunday, doesn't it? I mean, not just because of what we're doing tonight, which is going to be awesome when we all watch our team go on to victory, but, uh, but also because of what's happening this morning here. Right? It just feels like, hey, this is a fitting Super Bowl Sunday. So we're so glad to gather together. I know you're whispering some prayers for the birds, for good health, right, for good things. I did see somebody come in dressed in red. But this is a place of mercy and love. Right? I mean, we do stand on strong principles, but we are a place of mercy and love. So nevertheless, but uh, we're looking forward to that. And before that, we are really looking forward to hear from our guest this morning, Maddie Pruitt Trout. And we're happy that she's with us today. You know, Maddie is uh, 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 really a social influencer through all sorts of uh, social media, media, but Maddie is best known for being on the 24th season of The Bachelor, where she stood strong for biblical principles under a lot of pressure during the show. Now, beyond that, Maddie champions foster and orphan care. She has become an influential Christian voice in, in, in our culture, and she challenges and equips others to stand firm in a confusing and changing culture. So uh, help me this morning in welcoming Maddie Pruitt-Trout here this morning. What's up, Fairview Village Church? How are we feeling this morning? This is my first time in Philly. And I just think it was the Lord because what a perfect Sunday to just be introduced to Philly I, uh, I was told that I need to say, go birds, so go birds. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I am so honored to be here with you guys this morning and honestly so proud of you all for being here because you could be having your Super Bowl party, getting started, making all the foods, and I just believe God has a special just reward for you in heaven for being here this Sunday morning. And, uh, and I'm just so proud that I get to be in the room with you guys. Thank you, Pastor Dave, and to the whole team um, who invited me to be here. It's like we planned it for me to be here Super Bowl Sunday, but we didn't. We had no idea what was, <laughs> what, what was in store. Um, but I'm just really excited, and I'm excited just to get to share my story. I was um, actually praying about this last night, and a verse in Revelation came to mind. And I think it's Revelation, uh, like verse in like chapter 12 or something, but it, it says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And that just really stuck out to me because it just shows me the power of our testimony, the power of our story, the power of your story, and why we're called to share our story with other people, why we're called to, to share our testimony because it points other people back to him and it gives him glory. And so I wanna open up in prayer and then share my story with you guys. Jesus, thank you so much for, um, for choosing us, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy um, that is new every single morning, Lord. We um, just come before you this morning with just open hearts, and we just want to receive all that you're willing to give. Um, thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for every single person under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you have handpicked and chosen each and every single one of them, that you have put something so special, something so unique inside of all of them, Lord, that they have been called for such a time as this, and this world needs what they have inside of them. Lord, I pray that you would speak to all of us, that you would encourage us, that we would leave better than how we came in, and that we would give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and it's in your name. Amen. So I grew up in a Christian household with two Jesus-loving parents. I am the oldest um, of three girls, and always felt like I was like the second mom. And I liked to spend all of my time at the church. I went to every church retreat, every church camp. I was doing the church dramas, the sign language, everything they offered. 
And I loved Jesus. I had a bold faith. I was that little eight-year-old that would walk up to people and be like, have you ever heard of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Let me tell you about him. And I would lay hands on people if they were sick or if they needed healing and believe that God could heal them. I even saw um, some people get healed. And I just, I had the most radical faith and the most intimate relationship with Jesus. And so I spent either all my time at the church or all my time in the basketball gym. My dad was a high school girls and boys basketball coach. And so I loved to go to all the practices, all the camps, and just try and compete with these older guys and older girls. Like I was this little eight year old trying to like outscore them. And that's when my love for sports uh, really started. And so Jesus and basketball, that was my life. And then my dad got offered a job at um, a high school in Auburn, Alabama. And so we moved from this really small town in Alabama to Auburn, and I was entering middle school at this time. And you know middle school is that weird, awkward age, you know, where you're just like, things are changing, you're having thoughts you never really had before, and you're like, what's going on? And my hormones were changing, and, and now I'm in this new city at this new school. I don't have church. We don't have family nearby. I don't know anyone in this town, and um, I just wanted to fit in. I just wanted people to, to like me. And so I come to this, this school, and I I feel like, okay, what do I need to do to get people to like me, to accept me, and, and, to, and to love me and appreciate me? And so my, my, my focus and my priorities and my thoughts begin to change. And I really started to lose that intimacy with Jesus. And my relationship with him became way more about religion and reputation. I just cared about what other people thought about me. And I was just willing to do, you know, whatever I needed to do to be liked or accepted and uh, if I wasn't going crazy over boys, I was practicing basketball and spending all my time in the basketball gym. And so I constantly felt that, that tension and those questions of, am I more than just what other people think about me? Am I more than just the guys that reach out to me and, and want to take me on a date? Or am I more than, you know, my accomplishments on the basketball court? And I remember my senior year, my senior, my senior superlative was I got voted biggest flirt and best Christian example. So I was obviously in a little bit of an identity crisis, and that's all right. Jesus delivered me. Um, but I came into college with the same struggles and with the same questions, essentially asking, who am I? And I remember, I, because I went to a, a high school in Auburn and then I went to Auburn University, a lot of people from my high school went to Auburn. And I watched as so many of my friends that I came into college with began to change themselves and, and lose themselves essentially and give themselves to things and to people. And, and I knew that that wasn't them. I knew that that's not who you've been the last four or five years. That's not, you know, the way you were raised. And, and that started to become really hard for me because then I started wrestling. Well, they're doing it, so maybe I should do it. It's working for them. People like them. Guys are asking them out. So, like, maybe I just should also start changing and compromising and settling. And I remember I, I started, you know, going out to, to parties and events with my friends and, and, and flirting with all these guys and talking to all these guys and dressing a certain way. And, but I just remember it didn't bring me more of what I was looking for. I felt less of myself. I felt so far from, from freedom. I felt so far from, from truth. I felt so far from peace, from hope, from all those things. And I found myself one night, they were all going out, and I just stayed back in my dorm room, and I just hit my knees, and I started crying. And I just prayed to the Lord. I was like, I used to know you. Like, I used to know you well. I used to know myself well. Like, what happened? I want, I want you. I want more of you. And in that moment, I, I knew, like, I'm in college. This is my freshman year. I'm about to be in a season where I'm going to be faced with a lot of pressures and temptations. Like, this, it's not just this semester. Like, this is going to continue. And I knew I needed to decide in that moment, Maddie, who are you and who do you want to be? And I made a decision in that moment to go all in with Jesus. And I said, Lord, I want you again. I, I've, I've tried the other stuff and it's just, it's not enough. It just leaves me wanting more and more. And I'm in this endless cycle of just feeling lifeless. And, and so I went all in with Jesus and I just couldn't get enough of him every single day. I was so eager to wake up to get into his word. And 
I just wanted more and more, and so I, I joined my I joined a church, and then I started getting involved in in my church's small groups. And, you know, that last semester was a really hard one when I made a decision to go all in with Jesus because my friends didn't really understand it, and so I kind of felt lonely and isolated from people. But I knew going all in with Jesus was better than being with people that were going to take me away from Jesus. And so it was worth it to me. But I started getting involved in small groups, and I started meeting other people who loved Jesus. I was like, man, this is amazing. I'm no longer just on this faith journey by myself. Like I have people who now can encourage me and spur me on and point me to the cross and pray for me and call me higher and make me better. And that was a game changer for me. From there, I just, I kept wanting more and more. And so then I joined our church's college ministry. And then I started leading small groups and leading the college ministry. And then I joined our church's Bible college. And in 2018, I graduated from Auburn University with a degree in communications and also from Bible college with a certificate in ministry and pastoral leadership. And I knew that I was called to make a difference for the kingdom. I knew I was called to to love people in the name of Jesus. But I didn't know exactly what that looked like. And I got a job opportunity to move to Birmingham, Alabama, which was about two hours outside of Auburn. And it was for a foster care and adoption agency. And I grew up going on mission trips. And and so I had such a love for abused and neglected children. And and so I I knew, okay, God, this is this is where I'm supposed to be right now. And but it was it was a really hard job. It, it felt hopeless at times. It was overwhelming. It it was a lot of uh, long hours and long days, and it required a lot of travel. And also I had to work from home if I wasn't traveling. And that was a hard season for me because all of my friends who had graduated with me went on to get married and then start their dream job. And they're in offices nine to five, coming home to their husbands. And I was in a season out of college, 22 years old. And I don't know about here, but if you're a Christian and you uh, love Jesus and you are 22 years old and you're still single, well, then there's just something wrong with you. So I felt. And I felt that like tension of, Lord, what's wrong with me? Why, why, why is everyone else getting the blessings and the gifts and the things that I want that I'm asking for except me? How come they get to be married? How come they get to go to work and be around friends all the time? And, and I feel so lonely and I feel so isolated. And Lord, do you see me? I remember that season and it was really, really hard. But that was when my faith grew to such depth. Because every single morning I would wake up and spend three hours in God's word. If someone were to ask me, hey, hey, I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling sad, or I would have immediately 10 or 15 verses that would pop up in my mind that I would be able to just shoot off and give to them because I was spending so much time in God's word. And at night when all my friends were going home to their husbands, it was just me and God. And I was like, all right, so what you got for me tonight? Let's, what do we want to talk about? And we had such an intimate relationship. And, but it was a hard season, and I just kept asking the Lord, like, why, why am I here? What do you have for me? What was I called and created to do? And I kept feeling like he was speaking to me, Maddie, I am preparing you for something, and I just need you to trust me. I was like, okay, God, all right. And I felt like I was called to start writing a book. And, again, I'm 22, working for a foster care agency, single living in Birmingham, Alabama. No one knows who I am. I'm like, Lord, who am I writing this book for? But okay. So I started writing and a few months into writing, I get a call one day while I'm working out at the gym and it was from California. I'm like, who is calling me from California? I answer and it was ABC's The Bachelor. And I remember thinking, um, is this a prank call? Like who who of my friends is, is doing this to me right now? And uh, she proceeds to tell me all of these things about me. So I'm like, no, this is, I mean, this, she's legit. This is real. And they really want me to come on their show. But I'm a little confused because I'm like, okay, but I just, I just graduated seminary and I want to marry a pastor. So I don't really know how this is going to work. 
And uh, I'm like, I don't think I'm the Madison you're looking for. I don't think I'm the girl you want. And they were like, no, we really do. Like, just take time and think about it. And so I, I just really tell them I'm not really interested. And I hang up the phone and I call my mom thinking, you know, she's going to be like, yeah, no, absolutely not. And uh, I go on to tell her and I'm like, mom, you'll never believe, you know, who, who just called me. And I'm telling her the whole story. And I'm like, yeah, but I would, I would never do it. And, and she just stops me and she was like, Maddie, we never close a door or walk away from something until we've taken time to pray about it. Like, have you prayed about it? I was like, whoa, okay. Wasn't expecting that response from my mom, but okay. And so we did, and we took time as a family to fast and pray and just ask the Lord, like, this doesn't make sense, Lord. This, this, this couldn't, like, this, this makes zero sense. Like, how, why, how, what does this even mean or look like? But we just kept praying. And the Lord just kept giving so much peace and just opening the door and, and just leading us in that direction. And I was like, okay. And, but then people around me at my church, they started to find out about it. And there were a lot of really mean things that were said, friends that were like, sorry, okay, I can't be friends with you anymore. And a lot of rumors and, and just a lot of gossip all around it. And I just remember breaking down crying and I just told the Lord, I was like, this is such a small glimpse of what's to come. And it's, I already feel broken by this. Like, I, I can't do this. And I went to sleep, and I remember I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night, and I felt like I saw this vision. And I was in heaven standing next to Jesus, and he was pointing at all these faces, and he had this look of just proudness. And he was like, they are all here because you said yes to my call. You were willing to obey me whatever the cost, even when it didn't make sense, you said yes. And so they came to know me. And then it was like there was this whole different side where like the scenario completely changed. But it's the same people, it's me and Jesus. But now he has this look of like sadness. And he's like, hey, so, you know, all of these people could have made it, but you, you decided to care more about what other people thought than where I was leading you and what I was calling you to do. You feared man's approval over my approval. And I just remember being like, wow, oh my gosh. And, and I, I'm not even saying that I fully like biblically agree with that because I, I believe if God didn't use me to speak to some of those people, he could have used other people. And yada, 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 but I do believe that God has called every single one of you and me for such a time as this. I believe that you were made on purpose and for a purpose and that people are impacted when you share your story and you share your faith. And so I said, yes, I was like, okay, Lord, I get it. All right, I'll do it. I said, yes. And I had no idea what I was signing up for, y'all. I had never really seen the show before, and I think that that was the Lord's protection. He was like, I'm not going to let you see the show, because he knew if I did, I would have said absolutely not. And so I'd not, I didn't really know what I was signing up for, but I just trusted God's call. I trusted the peace he gave me. And so I stepped into that environment, and it was one of the hardest seasons of my life. I had never experienced pressure and temptation like that. I had never known darkness like that. I was removed from everything that made me me my whole life, having my church, being a part of a church, having my family, my friends around me. I'm thrown into this random environment when there's so much around me that I'm like, whoa, what, what's happening? And if you haven't seen The Bachelor, I'll you know just let you do your digging if you want to. But... Uh, essentially, it is one guy, 30 girls, and he is choosing who he wants to end up with. And each week, he is giving them a rose, and the rose says, hey, I want to keep dating you, and I want to keep getting to know you. Crazy, I know. And essentially, long story short, I made it to the very end. And it was so hard every single week I was just praying like Lord I know you called me to this but I need your strength to sustain me through it like I need you right now and the last two weeks of the show were some of the hardest moments and I remember 
when I felt the weakest and the lowest, and I was like, Lord, I don't know if I can keep going, those are the very weeks that God used in the biggest way. And during those weeks, I was able to share my faith. I was able to share my stance on purity. I was able to say, hey, I believe in Jesus, and not just the one that's on a cross necklace and that's in my bio on my Instagram, but I believe in Jesus who saved my soul the Jesus that I build my whole life on, every decision I make, every relationship, every step, everything that I do is built on the foundation of Jesus. He's my life, he's my world. And I got to share that on national television. And then I got to go on to share about how I made a decision to pursue purity, to save myself for marriage, to make that a priority and a commitment. And y'all, that was hard because that's not a popular thing to, to share in Hollywood or on TV, even in the actual environment of filming. There were a lot of people who were discouraging me, telling me not to, to share. And I just was like, this is who I am. This is what I believe. And I remember when I came off the show, I was so overwhelmed by the response, a lot of hate, a lot of judgment a lot of really mean things that I could never repeat on this stage being said to me. And I felt so misunderstood and I wanted to just lash back out and be like, no, this is really who I am. This is really what I believe. But Lord was like, just keep silent. You just keep, keep living for me. But it was so traumatic. I lost over like 20 pounds. I was super anxious. My, my health was going crazy. But at the same time, there were so many messages and there were so many women and, and girls coming up to me crying, saying, I saw your faith and because of your faith, I decided to give my heart to Jesus. I saw your stance in pursuit of purity and so I made a commitment to pursue purity. I saw it was possible. There were standards being set faith being fought for. And I was watching as the Lord was, was using me in this environment and I was, I was blown away. And I look back now and I'm just like, man, if God can use someone like me, an ordinary, not special girl from Alabama in something like The Bachelor to bring glory to his name, he can use you. And whatever your circumstances are, whatever your season of life looks like, he can and wants to use you. I ended up leaving the show and uh, I, I walked away from that relationship, but that was a really, a really hard moment and like a big tension point of, I know God's way, I know God's will, but there's this separation and this tension between my head and my heart, my feelings and my faith. Like, what do I choose? What do I do? I'm being told what to do. I, I, I'm seeing what, what gets you, you know, praise and acceptance what other people will, will like. If, if, I, if I make a stance for, for things I don't believe in, I'll, I'll be liked and appreciated. But if I stand firm in my faith and convictions, like people aren't gonna understand and I'm gonna be judged. And I was at that crossroads. But I essentially was just like, Lord, I came here because I felt led to. And so I'm gonna keep walking in your way and just trust you through it. And it's crazy for me to, to look back now and what feels like forever ago, but also how the Lord has used it and is continuing to use it. And that's why I believe in the power of your testimony and sharing your story. Because I can't even count how many people have come up to me and shared just how impacted they've been. And we all have an opportunity to share our story and our testimony with people. And the world we're living in today, y'all, that's hard to do. There's a lot of people who, who don't understand my faith. There's a lot of people who don't agree with my faith. There's a lot of people who criticize, and I'm not even just talking about the world, I'm talking about the church. I've had a lot of church hurt too. But it's worth it because people are coming to know Jesus because I'm living the life that God's called me to live. 
And I want the same for you. I want you to be able to stand firm under pressure. I want you to be able to stand firm in your faith. I want you to know who you are in a world that's constantly trying to tell you who you are. And so I want to talk about some things that, that you can do that will hopefully encourage you and inspire you to stand firm in your faith, no matter what pressures and temptations you face today. And the first is, you got to know your why. You got to know your why. Your values, your convictions, your standards. Why? Why do you stand firm? Why do you believe what you believe? You got to, your why drives your way. If you lose your why, you'll lose your way. The Bible says in Proverbs, without vision, the people perish. You got you to gotta know where you're going and why you're going there. My life verse is Acts 20, 24, and it says, for I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That's my why. That's your why. That's why we're here. To know him and to make him known. That's our purpose. That's our why. You got to know your why. The second is you got to value your private life over your public life. We live in a world where everyone wants to celebrate the public life, the likes, the retweets, the follows, like that's what gets you attention and that's what gets you affirmation. So just focus on that. Do everything you can to build that. But that's not, that's not what Jesus modeled for us. That's not how we're called to live as believers. Who you are alone with the Lord, who you are alone with God, tells me everything I need to know about who you are. Who you are when no one is watching is who you will be when everyone is watching. When I had people ask me when I came off the show, how'd you do it? How'd you stand firm in an environment like that? I'm like, what do you mean? Because I was doing that not on TV. That's just, that's who I am. That's, that's what I, I, I live out because I value my private life. I value my, my quality time with Jesus every morning, every day. I have nothing to give this world if I'm not receiving from him. You don't want Maddie apart from him, I promise. We're called to live in love from overflow. We have nothing to give if we're not receiving it from him. The third is, you gotta walk in your God-given identity. You gotta know who you are. And that private life is so important because that's where you discover whose you are, who you belong to, who you live for. And then from that place, you can begin to love others and love yourself from the way he sees us. What, is, what does God's word say about who we are? Because when I read the word, it says that we were made in his image. We bear the image of God. When people see us, they can see the character of our God. He calls us his masterpiece. The creator of this whole world, of the oceans and the stars and the mountains and the flowers and the fields. He created all of that, but says, hey, you're my best work. You're the best part. You're the masterpiece. And in order for us to stand firm in today's world, we have to know who we are in Christ. The fourth is you have to predecide your values and beliefs and standards outside of the heat and pressure and temptation of the moment. I can promise you I did not make a decision to save myself for marriage when I was alone in a room with a cute guy or when I was with my friends and they were all talking about what they were going to do with their boyfriends in the coming up weekend. Like I made a decision when I was alone with the Lord and I read Ephesians 1 verse 4 and it says, for he chose me in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. 
that, that's, he chose me to be holy. So I'm gonna pursue holiness. I made that decision outside of temptation, outside of the pressure, when my mind was clear, when my eyes were on Jesus. And that's what you and I have to do in order to stand firm in our faith. We have to decide, like I did alone in my dorm room that day, who am I? Who do I wanna be? Who, how does he call me to live? And you, you write those standards down, send it to an accountability partner, find a friend. And that leads me to the fifth point of how you stand firm under pressure, find godly community. Find people that point you to the cross. Find people that make you better and challenge you to be the best that you can be. Find, surround yourself with people that are gonna spur you on and encourage you in your faith. You become like those you surround yourself with. And we weren't made to do life alone. We were made for relationships, but we should be careful and selective about what those relationships look like. We need to find people to do life with that make us more like Jesus. Because I want to reflect the heart of my God. We need to find people that push us closer to Jesus. I leave from hanging out with them and I'm immediately eager to go spend time with the Lord. And third, we need people who help us make a difference for Jesus. They push us closer to our purpose, not take us away from it. And the last point is you gotta put your faith into action. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to do it. If my husband was just like, I love you, girl, but then he didn't show me or he wasn't faithful or he wasn't actually living a life that showed that he loved me, then those words would mean nothing. And it's the same for you and I, for us to sit here and say, I'm a Christian, but our lives don't even reflect it. We look just like the rest of the world. We're not standing firm in our faith. We're conforming to everything around us. No, we're called to put our faith into action. The Bible says faith without action is dead. We are called to serve, to make a difference, to go and make disciples. That's why you and I are here. He didn't save you just for you to sit back, drink some lemonade, kick your feet up and have some good laughs. That's fine, but he saved you. He put gifts inside of you for you to take that and go and spread his name to this world that is broken and hurting and lost. That's why we're here, to make his name known. And y'all, I have seen a lot. I have been around a lot. I've been exposed to a lot. I've had seasons where I've felt God's abundance and I've had seasons where I've felt lack. I've had seasons of saying, God, you're so good. And seasons where I'm like, God, where are you? I've been around people who have everything you could want, every follower, every dollar, every success, all the fame, all the fortune, everything this world says to strive for. I've been around those people. And a lot of them are still crying themselves to sleep saying, is there more? Is this, is this all there is? And I'm like, yes. Yes, and his name is Jesus, and he's available to you just like he's available to me, and he is the only one that will satisfy. The only one. Nothing else, no one else. A marriage, a friendship, a job, success, like it does not satisfy us. Only Jesus can. And Pastor Dave is gonna come up and close us in prayer, but wherever you're at in your faith journey, I hope you feel encouraged and challenged that God sees you. He loves you. He chooses you. And thankfully, 
Not like a reality TV show that chooses you based off of your, your, your performance or your looks or what you have or what you've done. He just chooses you, not because of who you are, but because of who he is. That's the God that we serve. And so as he prays for, for us, I just, I hope that you would just open up your heart to receive whatever God wants to speak to you and that you would be challenged to go and share your story because this world needs what you have. And I truly believe that you were made for this moment. Thank you guys. Boy, we appreciated uh, Maddie's message, didn't we? So I think we could even do better and say thanks, Maddie. So uh, how powerful and wonderful that was. And, uh, and you know, one of the things Maddie did, and I know that you noticed this, is what Maddie did was Maddie didn't point us to herself. He, she pointed us to Jesus, right? She said, hey, Jesus is the one. Nothing else can satisfy you in life but Jesus. What a powerful thought and reality and truth that is. And there's a lot of things that she said today. In fact, when, when I was listening and she started speaking, I thought, I'm going to write down everything powerful she says. And after the first six or seven minutes, she was just into her testimony. I said, I'm writing down everything she's saying, you know. So, but, but there's something that she said this morning that the Holy Spirit caused it to resonate in your heart. There's something she said, right? She, she, it may have been when she said, you know, I needed to make a decision to go all in with Jesus. I mean, maybe you're there. Maybe you're struggling with that. Maybe you're not all in with Jesus, and you're debating that, and you're questioning that. And, and, and man, maybe it's time right now for you to say, yeah, I'm going to go all in with Jesus. Maybe it's when she said, boy, we're not here to sit back and, you know, drink tea and, and just, have a, just have a good time. I mean, we're here to make a difference, to reach out, to be Christ's representative in our world. There's a broken and lost world all around us, and we're here to represent him in this world. There is something that she said that, uh, that resonated with you. But there's one statement she said, and this is what I want to conclude with. I want to, like, put it into practice for us just this morning before we leave. And it was her mother's advice. Do you remember what she said her mother's advice was? Pray on it. We don't do anything unless we first talk to Jesus. So you know what I want us to do just in our closing moments here is I just want to spend a moment talking to Jesus. And, and, and whatever it is that resonated with you in, in, in Maddie's message today, whatever part or whatever word or whatever instruction she gave you, you know, hey, man, care more about what Jesus says than about what, what the world says. What does Jesus say about you? I mean, those are, those are things that should resonate in our heart and the Holy Spirit's at work within us. I mean, but, but here's what I'm going to pray about this morning. And, and whatever it is that you need to pray about in Maddie's message, I, I'm going to say a prayer for those who are in our midst that has never received the grace that Jesus Christ offers into your life. Like you've just never said, I believe. I believe Jesus is who he said he is. And, and you've never received, uh, you never received the salvation and the, and the grace that he, he offers us, the, the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts, to be a real temple of of, of the Holy Spirit in this world and in our lives. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a word of prayer along that line. And whatever you need to, to pray, you pray today. But if you need the prayer that I'm going to pray, then, then, then you can pray it after me. You can repeat my words. I, I mean, you could say it in your own words, right? Because Jesus just wants to sincerely have a conversation with you this morning. So, man, with all of us, with all of our head bowed and our eyes closed, let, Let's pray. Jesus, I believe that you are who you say you are. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for all of my wrongdoing and all of my sin. And I recognize this morning that I am a sinner and that I'm in need of a Savior. So, so right now in this moment, Lord, I confess that truth. I confess you are who you are and I am who I am and I need you. I need your grace and mercy and your forgiveness. And so Lord, I, I turn from, from my own thoughts and I, I turn from the thoughts of the world and I turn to your thoughts, your thoughts for me, your direction for me. I turn to that. And in this moment, 
I receive the wonderful gifts that you offer me. The gift of forgiveness, where guilt is, is wiped away. The, the gift of the deposit of the Holy Spirit in my heart to guide me and direct me and, and mold me. Right now in this moment, Jesus, I receive what it is that you offer to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me so much that you didn't just stay in heaven, but that you wrapped yourself in flesh and you, and you came and you walked among us and that you gave yourself on, on that cross for me. But, but Jesus, that isn't even the end of the story as powerful and as awesome and as incredible as that is. You walked out of that tomb alive. And so you offer every single one of us new life. What a good thing that is. How powerful. So Jesus, this morning, I want to walk in, in the power and in the newness of the resurrection. And thank you, Jesus, for making that possible for me. I love you, Jesus. And I praise you. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Well, this morning, if you prayed that prayer, I, I want you to make it known to us, right? I mean, I want you to take the card. There's a card on every chair, and it has a QR code on it. So if you, if you want to use your phone, you can use your phone to communicate with us. If you just want to fill the card out, right, just fill it out. You can place it in the basket that goes by at the, at the offering time. But, but one of the things Maddie said is she said, you know, don't walk alone. Have a group of people who you journey with in life matters. So, so this morning, if you're like, hey, I, I, I don't have a group of people. Boy, we would, we would love to be that for you. So, so take the opportunity and fill that out. And, uh, and we want to be a help and a support in any way we can be. So the ushers are going to make their way forward to receive the offering. And we're going to conclude our time together by, by worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's stand together. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you got a lot out of it. If you feel like you need to respond, you can visit fairviewvillagechurch.com slash prayer, and you can fill out the forms there and let us know how we can be praying for you. Or you can scan the QR code below, and that'll take you everywhere you need to go for next steps. Thanks so much for joining. We hope you have a great week and looking forward to connecting with you.